Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by Apex Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Whiteley and this is your Golf Central update. After losing the world number one spot in the women's game, Jin Young Ko is back in the winner's circle at the Volunteers of America Classic. She closed with seven straight pars for a 2 under 69 and a one-shot victory on Sunday, holding off Matilda Kastrin of Finland, who also shot 69. Jin Young Ko spoke with the media after about her mentality following the win. Was it freeing for you this week? to not be the world's number one for the first time in nearly two years? Yeah, I think so. I um, I wasn't playing good last two or three events. And then Nelly, she played really well last couple of events. So I was thinking, yeah, she's going to be world ranking number one. And it's going to be moved to ranking two. So, but, um, yeah. Um, it was a little, little bit, it was tired when I, when I ranking number one, I didn't know, but after moved to ranking two, I was thinking, uh, I got a lot of pressure when I, when I was re ranking number one, but, but, but I'm still alive, so it's <laughs> fine, and I don't want to think about too much about world ranking number one because I have a lot of fans out there and then I have my parents, I have great dog, I have a lot of good friends. So I want to I want to like play better and then show to my older like fans and my lovers to my lovers. And we are just one week away from the fourth and final men's major championship of the year. Two years on since Shane Larry lifted the claret jug, it is finally his chance to defend at the Open Championship at Royal St. George's as the Open is back on the rotor. Well, let's take a look at what is happening this week as the Rolex Series returns and the European Tour head to the Renaissance Club for the Aberdeen Scottish Open. So with that, I'm very pleased to welcome in John Huggin, writer for Golf Digest. And uh, John, let's start with one of Europe's finest first. Roy McIlroy just got a big three weeks of golf started last week in Ireland as part of his big run up to the Open Championship. Bit of a lacklustre T59 finish, says he needs to work pretty hard on his game this week in Scotland. What do you make of the Rory that we're seeing at the moment? Well, I think um, the Irish Open, I, I hate to say this, but I'm sure it was a, basically a practice week for Rory. There was a lot of things to get past. You know, he'd taken some time off after the US Open. The Irish Open's been played on an inland course. There was a bit of jet lag involved, obviously. I don't think Rory will be too worried about his um, 59th place at the Irish Open. Tell you what, though, if he finishes 59th in the Scottish Open, then we should get a, bit, a little bit worried. Yeah, his preparations are not exactly going how they would like to be in the Open Championship is the last opportunity he has of the season to add that elusive fifth major title to his resume. Uh, so looking for some improvements this week. Um, but talking of this week, the field is absolutely littered with stars at the Aberdeen Scottish Open. World number one and recent US Open champ John Rahm. Then you've got the third, fourth and fifth ranked players in the world. Justin Thomas, Colin Murakawa, Xander Shoffley. How much will this event be elevated by these Americans? American studs who were travelling over the pond. Well, it's it's the best field I think we've ever seen in the Scottish Open. There's, um, I think I'm right in saying there's 23 of the world uh, the world top 60 are playing. Um, obviously, the, the the date is everything for the Scottish Open. I mean, the you can't ask for a, a better date than the week before the Open. This is why all these guys are playing, and the, and the difference between this week and the Irish Open is quite stark. I mean, they were playing, I think it was four of the top 60 in Ireland playing for $3 million. This week they're playing for $8 million and 23 of the, the top guys show up. So there's a lot to look forward to. John, there will be stringent protocols on the players at the Open Championship at Royal St. George's, including being confined to an official hotel, no mixing with the general public and wearing masks. There have been some indications that some players may take a pass on this major because of the restrictions. What are you hearing? And in your opinion, is the RNA getting this right or wrong? Well, I think the RNA are doing what they're told. Um, the government are, are making most of these decisions. Um, I get that some of it seems a bit illogical. Um, 32,000 people there to spectate when the players are being asked to either, as you say, stay in the, the official hotel or in a, a house with only three other people. 
Um, but I also, you know, the other side of that coin is, I'm not sure I want to hear from these multi-millionaire golfers who are getting the chance to play for a first prize of more than $2 million and win the most famous trophy in golf. I mean, to put themselves out just a little bit for four or five days doesn't seem like a big ask to me. And the European Ryder Cup captain, Padraig Harrington, has indicated that he will choose Sergio Garcia and Ian Poulter with two of his three captain's picks if they don't otherwise qualify for the team. Do you think committing to two plus 40-year-old veterans who are not playing particularly well can pot potentially undermine Europe's future teams by denying promising younger players needed experience? Well, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the list of people who are, who are not on the team at the moment, if he picks Poulter and, uh, and Sergio as he strongly hinted that he would. I mean, the list that you've got Lowry, Molinari, you know, Rose, Weisberger, McIntyre, Willett, Wallace, Keimer, the list goes on and on. But there's only going to be one place left for for one of those guys. So it's it's going to be a very different looking team and a very experienced team as it could go. I mean, if Perez drops out, which he's, he's right on the edge at the moment, he, Victor Hovland would be the only rookie on the team. Yeah, it's a huge decision Podrick's got as to who he's going to fill that third spot with if he has already made his decision on those first two picks. Um, but we've got the Ryder Cup coming up. We've also got the Olympics coming up, John. There's still so much to cram in uh, to the rest of this season. Now, right now, it looks like England got Fleetwood and Paul Casey going. We know how much it meant to Justin Rose when he claimed gold. Uh, for these guys going, how big do you believe an opportunity the Olympics are for these players? Well, there's, there's, you know, there's very many excuses for not going, as we, we discussed. I've got great sympathy for the, the South Koreans, but um, I, I'd be tempted to go. I mean, I think the, the, the overall experience would, would be the big attraction for most of these guys, although I think this year will be very different. They won't be able to, to go to the other events and, and be part of the scene, if you like. But um, you've got to come up with a pretty good excuse for not going to represent your country. I mean, that seems to me the, the ultimate honour. John, I was just curious, you've known Pete Cavanaugh such a long time. Uh, how do you feel that his work with Rory is going? Do you see a change in Rory's game? Do you think he needed a change in his game? And how do you see it progressing either short-term or long-term? Well, I think Rory just needed a change. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly whether there's been much difference yet, but it's, it's too soon to tell. If, there, if there's a major change going on, we're not going to see that any difference, good or bad, for, for some time yet. But I think he just needed something different. He needed a different voice. He needed a different message. He just, you know, it's like a caddy player relationship. There's a shelf life on these things. And no disrespect to Michael Bannon, but um, I'm sure he was struggling to, to come up with something different for Rory to, to, to listen to. And um, as I say, I think uh, a change is as good as a rest. And I think that's what that's basically what Rory needed. It doesn't, the specifics are, are not that important. It was just he needed something different to hear. Yeah, a bit of tough love from Pete Cowan. That's what a lot of the players out there love so much about working from him. Uh, John, awesome to hear your thoughts here on a Monday. Thank you so much. Big week uh, for Scotland, of course, and uh, then we're heading into the Open. So uh, lots to look forward to. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers. And over on the European Tour, Lucas Herbert ended up winning by three shots over Sweden's Rickard Karlberg in Ireland. Johan Veerman was in contention before a late bogey and another strong showing from Richard Bland. He ended up tied for fourth, but it was Herbert's weekend, his second career win on the European Tour. But this week, you can enjoy a star-studded field at the Aberdeen Scottish Open as players finally tune their games ahead of the Open.